who, if you're working in, in a uh, uh, production environment, you obviously want to have a high, high availability, you want to have two firewalls and enable HA, and uh, if one goes down, the other one uh, will take over, or, or even more than two, two firewalls, that's totally up to you. But uh, for this particular lab, we only have one virtual firewall, uh, so we don't really have any HA, but if you want to enable HA, you could just simply click on this and uh, enable HA, uh, uh, allocate a group ID to both parties, and specify the IP addresses for those parties. Uh, then your HA, you can set up a pure HA like that. Um, the uh, other thing that uh, is probably useful to know is the config audit. So when uh, we are changing things on, on a lot of uh, you could uh, compare the uh, config with previous config or compare your running config with the safe config and things like that and find out the differences. So that's, that's a handy thing, so I will show you later on. Password profiles, you could specify password profiles. So we're just going to set up password profile card, uh, my pass profile. So, um, so we just want to say every 120 days, for example, passwords must be changed. Uh, um, 20 days before expiration, just want to do a warning um, and uh, uh, probably pre logging count uh, post expiration. So that's uh. That's a password profile that you can set up, um, and you could use that password profile with, with individual accounts that you're creating on the system, and uh, make sure those accounts will follow uh, the password policy that you specify. The administrator, uh, you could uh, um, change the admin password or account passwords here or, or rules and things like that or you could add a new one uh, if you want to if you have a authentication profile you can use your authentication profile for that uh, only radius authentication profile and local authentication profile is supported with, with administrator account and you could uh, basically specify the different rules and stuff in there as well and you can see the password profile that I created you could use it there. <laughs> rules again, um, there are a whole bunch of rules. Uh, there are some obviously uh, default um, rules created by the system, but you could just create your own rule. Uh, you can see there are a whole bunch of different uh, access to the system that you could specify. You could say, uh, I want a user to have access only to uh, dashboard. And nothing else. Um, uh, if uh, you are using, you are working with an application, or, or you have an application which is working through API with the firewall, you could uh, uh, change the API settings as well if you want to. Um, and uh, through command line, obviously, you could uh, specify what kind of uh, command line access you want to provide to that specific rule, and then. Uh, assign that rule to the user. So that's another thing that you could do. Um, so the um, other important thing is uh, is uh, licensing and, and uh, support and things like that in there. Um, so you could obviously, if you have a license, as I said, you could, you could get trial licenses uh, from Palo Alto. You could just contact them and get some free trial licenses. Uh, so you could just import your licenses here if you want to. So that's, that's another thing. Uh, and uh, uh, 
the support, obviously, if you want to generate the tech support, buy. Sometimes when you want to get support, but for what you need, you need to prepare some information, send it to them. Uh, software that it will uh, uh, give you if, if the, the firewall is connected to the internet, mine is not at the moment. If your firewall is connected to the internet, you can see there are a whole bunch of uh, updates showing up here. So you could download the updates and install it on your firewall, basically update your firewall uh, if you want to. Um, box settings, you could specify what kind of logs you want to send out and how. Um, so we will be talking about this a bit more detailed when we talk about uh, the logs and logging, but basically uh, you need to uh, create a syslog profile first. Um, and once you created the syslog profile, uh, you could specify the lock on the lock setting. You could specify uh, how to work with the syslog profile and what kind of locks to be sent to the syslog uh, profile. The other thing that you have uh, is response pages. So you could customize all all these pages. So by default, all of those are some uh, default response pages. If there is a virus detected or anything like that, you will. Uh, bring up some specific uh, HTML pages for, for the user. You could uh, uh, change that, you could uh, export this and go and do your customization and import it again, and things like that if you want to do it as well. So these are some generic information, as I said. Uh, any any time that you do some changes, uh, I've done the DNS change and stuff, any time you do a change, you need to click and commit, and uh, if you want, you could uh, just preview the changes, uh, how many lines you want to show up. Uh, you can see these changes will be applied to the firewall. And you could validate the change, so it's going to tell you whether the changes are valid or, or there's any problem. And you can commit the changes, so it will be applied after you commit the changes to the firewall. So these are uh, basically some introduction about uh, uh, initial system configuration of the firewall. The firewall. We will be talking obviously in more details and practically on how to set up different bits and pieces on, on, on the firewall uh, on, on the next video. So um, I'll see you on the next video with more details and uh, we will start setting up the system. Thanks for watching this video.